James Turner, formerly known as The Sim Supply, published a video a few weeks ago where he created a home in The Sims 4 based on AI-generated floor plans. He then challenged viewers to create something new with this shell. None of the exterior nor interior walls could be changed, but the rest was up for grabs. I'll show a few screenshots of his original build here, as well as a link to his video in the description in case you want to watch the origin story of this shell. Since this shell challenge is from James Turner, I wanted to use his Big Wallet Dynasty as my inspiration for this speed build. In his current high school years let's play, his heir, Reginald Big Wallet, is a spellcaster who's a former style influencer turned successful businessman. Reginald's husband, Kevin, is a stay-at-home dad and avid knitter. These beefcake dads are all about good appearances and flaunting their successes. So I combined all of these elements into my vision of their perfect two-part retail space. Floor 1 is a stylish clothing boutique featuring custom knit clothes from Kevin. And Floor 2 is a magical bath and beauty shop featuring mystical potions from Colum, all hand-picked and run by Reginald. With this being a shell challenge, you may be wondering about the curved wall addition I put on the front. I wanted to add a bit of dimension to the facade, so I did something a little sneaky with the rules. With these build challenges, usually you aren't able to attach any additional walls to the existing shell, but fences and half walls are fine. So I added this curved room, but deleted the walls that attach to the shell and replaced them with the tallest half walls. I'd say this is definitely severely bending the rules without technically breaking them, so that's what I did. Since the shell is just a big box, one of the challenges was making it look not so much like a flat square. To help it blend into the historic town area of Windenburg Moor, I flanked the sides with these debug buildings from Realm of Magic. The box was still looking a bit flat, so I added in this glass awning over the entrance as well as trellises and vines growing up the walls. It'd be super easy to slap a square roof on this building and call it a day. But I wanted to create a little more interest and lean into the Art Deco vibes while also fitting into the European style world of Windenburg. So I added these curved dormers and had them pop out a bit. These corbels definitely help make them seem less awkward and more like an intentional architectural feature rather than having these roof pieces just sticking out on their own. For the floor plan, I rotated the building to use the left side as the front instead of the original orientation. This allowed me to have a big open space to use as the main sales floor of the clothing boutique. Upstairs, there were a lot more rooms to work with though, so it was a little trickier to figure out how to make this floor plan work. So I pretty much just added a bunch of archways to help things flow a bit better for a retail space. I also figured I'd use the separate rooms for grouping special sections of items together, but we'll get to what all those wind up being later. One thing I did know at this point though, was that I wanted to find a way to fit in this cauldron as a way to show off where all the bath and beauty products are made. Most of the rooms were a bit too small, and this big room at the front I wanted to keep clear to use as the main sail floor. So I put the cauldron at the back, again we'll see this in further detail later. Now, since this is a James Turner build, I had to incorporate plenty of items from Journey to Batu. I think these items work well with the reclaimed magic vibes we have going on here, so you'll see some Star Wars pack items sprinkled throughout this build. Speaking of Journey to Batu, you may be wondering why I have that pack, yet not the High School Years pack. I have two reasons. 
Number one, a while back I wanted to bundle packs to get, I think, Snowy Escape with paranormal stuff perhaps. In order to make the bundle, I had to add a game pack, and Batu was the only one I didn't have at the time. Pricing out the other two packs, it didn't make sense to buy them each separately, so I figured why not bundle them all together. Reason 2, as far as build buy goes, Journey to Batu is actually a solid pack if you like creating non-traditional builds. These items can work really well for futuristic, apocalyptic, fantasy, and other styles we don't have tons of other options for. The gameplay it comes with sucks and was a waste of time and resources by EA, but that's another thing entirely. So even though I wasn't interested in getting this pack initially, I found that I use this stuff from it frequently and I'm glad I have it now. But it's definitely not for everyone and I totally respect anyone who refuses to buy it. Since I couldn't add or remove any interior walls, I had to do a bit of a workaround to remove the gap by these stairs to make them look like they extend the entire length of the back wall. I like the look of the back of this cabinet, but we can't place cabinets on their own, so I had to build a temporary wall, place the cabinet on the opposite side of it, then delete the wall so the back of the cabinet would be facing inward. I think the color and texture of these cabinets work quite well with the color and texture of the back of these counters from Perfect Patio Stuff. I love the teal swatches on some of these Batu items, so I use that as my pop of color to bring some variety to the dark wood and light stone colors I use as my neutrals. Surprisingly, the Dream Home Decorator pack has this dark wood and cool sage swatch on many of the items that kind of works with the color scheme I was going for. I never thought I'd be pairing Dream Home Decorator with Batu, but here we are, and I like it. Because this was kind of a wonky AI generated home and a shell challenge where I can't change the floor plan, there ended up being some oddly placed small rooms. With a couple of them, I decided to use them as alcoves for sections of items. This one I used as a display for shoes. I tried using three of these freestanding shelving units from Dream Home Decorator here, but they kept snapping together at the ends so I couldn't place them the way I wanted. I wish we could toggle the snapping of these modular items on or off so that they could be used in more ways with each other. But since we can't, I switched plans and stacked just one of them on top of this island counter from Perfect Patio Stuff. I used a lot of stone, wood, and glass as the main materials here to sort of reflect the historic, thrifted, and modern themes of this lot. Using these wood and stone tables to display items were good bases, but they needed a little more oomph. Sizing down then raising up these glass topped accent tables from Seasons did just the trick. This back area I made into the children's clothing section. Speaking of kids, since Reginald and Sydney's kids go to school together and are becoming friends, I could totally see a scenario where Sydney and Ava hear about this new boutique and decide to take Addison and Hillary here to go school shopping, trying to flex about how successful and fashionable they are. And then when they get here, Reginald and Kevin are greeting them and being super smug when Sydney and Ava find out it's their store. Their whole dynamic is so toxic, but also so entertaining at the same time. But only because it's all fictional, if these were real people, I would definitely steer clear of them all. Honestly, I have no idea how clutter items are classed so that the vast majority of things do not slot to wall shelves. 
raising and lowering things with the nine and zero keys often doesn't work either and ends up with things either floating or getting cut off. As a good workaround, I use the OMSP red shelf in the same way as I do for custom placing items on tables. It has so many slots and fits most all clutter items on it. Plus, it can be alt placed at any height on the wall. Since it's a CC object and not a script mod, it doesn't break and need to be re-downloaded with every game update. I'll put a link in the video description if you want to get it for your game too. Since I sized these tables down, items won't slot properly to them. To work around this, I found a side table that was at the same height of the display table I sized down, so that I could slot items to that table, then drag them off to where the display table would be, just as I did with the stone ones. You could also put a wall, then place the OMSP wall shelf to the proper height, and use that to slot objects to instead, if you have that custom content. Since the regular side tables in the game were at the right height already, I just used one of them though. You may be thinking it's a bit odd to have bath towels mixed in with the clothing. Which is true, but since there aren't many clothing clutter options, I'm pretending these big folded towel stacks are pants or skirts or maybe sweatshirts. The small rolled towels could be tank tops, socks, or scarves, so just pretend with me, okay? This back area I turned into changing rooms. You'll see me placing walls, but don't worry, I'm just using them to put in the windows to act as privacy screens. I was planning on just deleting the walls and having the windows float, but when I did that, it caused some lighting issues, so I ended up adding in half walls to fix it, which technically isn't against typical shell challenge rules. These beaded curtains from Paranormal Stuff added in just the right mystical touch here. These chairs from Eco Lifestyle definitely play into the reclaimed, thrifted vibes as do these teal stools from Laundry Day. The last small room to furnish down here, I turned into a bathroom. It's definitely more spacious than I'd prefer for a retail restroom, but we can just say it's more handicap accessible this way, even though that's unfortunately not a thing in The Sims. I like trying to layer ceiling lights together to create new combination pieces. I knew I liked these woven lights from Eco Lifestyle as they tied into the knitting clothing theme, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to pair with them. Once I saw that these repurposed metal lights from City Living came in teal to match our color scheme, I knew I had to use them. How many other times am I actually going to use this swatch? Not many. So in they went. Thank you. 
Oddly, sometimes when you're using move objects, it'll have a glitch where changing certain things in build mode will delete random objects. If you could tell with the wall paint, that's exactly what was happening here for some reason. Thankfully, I have the Better Build By mod from Twisted Mexi installed, which has a deletion protection mode you can toggle on while you're making these build changes, which stops this from happening. This is just one feature of this amazing mod that is such a lifesaver. It's definitely one of my must-have mods. I'll put a link in the description if you'd like to download it too. The second floor I made into a magical bath and beauty shop. I imagine after Reginald reconnected with his mom and worked on building up his spellcaster skills, he roped Colm in to going into business with him, she adds a magical touch to the products, and he hypes them up to all the trendsetters. These angled shelves are from the fitness stuff pack, and that big cupboard on left is from Jungle Adventure. I was pleasantly surprised at how so many different packs were able to mesh together in this build. It's quite fun to find those unexpected pairings and see what you can get to work together. I'd love to hear what you all have found. Do you have any odd build by pairings from seemingly opposing packs that you really like together? Share your surprising finds with us in the comments. This is a trick I saw James do as well as the Sims community. You take this round stone accent table from the Desert Lux kit, grab a dirt pile from Debug, raise it up to sit on top of the table, then layer in a decor, build, or debug plant to make a custom potted plant. I can see me using this technique so much now that I've learned it. With Kevin being high maintenance and super into fitness, I can see him being a regular at their own store. He's that person who's way too into their appearance and trying to seem young. I imagine a significant draw on the boutique's profit coming from supplementing all the free samples Kevin takes for himself. Anyone else get that vibe from him? With Reginald and Kevin being such self-promoters and always hustling, I think they'd be that annoying business couple that every gift or party favor they give, you just know it's going to be one of their own products and they're gonna talk your ear off about it. Since their products are stylish and have some magical properties though, you probably wouldn't mind all that much. This was another odd small room in the floor plan that I dedicated to a special section of product. Since a significant part of specialty natural beauty products as well as magical potions and spells are all about the botanicals used in them, I made this into a little herbalism space. In here you can find a variety of items to help you grow all the herbs you need for your beauty or magic concoctions. Gardening tools, plant fertilizers, potted plants, etc. I wanted it to look a little more magical, so later on I added in some glowing cacti and plant sim seeds to help infuse those vibes back in here. This area on the wall I made into a little consumable section for things like teas, tinctures, and dried herbs. Yeah. 
This mix of high-end natural beauty boutique and magical oddity shop is so appealing to me. I'd absolutely love to visit a place like this in real life, but I know I probably wouldn't be able to afford anything in it, so maybe it's best I just don't have anything like this near me. Over here is a little spot for crystals and stones. A fact about me, I'm fascinated by rocks and minerals and fossils. I've always enjoyed finding and collecting rocks since I was little, and I still have a small assortment of them on display in my home as an adult. If you've seen that episode of Big Bang Theory where they're chanting rock show, yeah, that's me. I don't know a ton about rocks and minerals, but I love them still. Not in a magical healing sense, but in a I'm into science and history sort of way. I don't think I've ever met any other adults who enjoy rocks too, so if you're one of them, give me a shout in the comments. This room at the back is a staff area. There wasn't quite enough room here to make a full live-in space, so I just made a break room. There's a kitchenette and dining table to take your lunch break, and a comfy reclaimed chair to relax in. Over here, I put some actual potions. Now when I was in live mode, there was no option to set the potions for sale, only list them on Plopsy. So I guess these are just for decoration then? There are plenty of other items in here that can be sold in a retail space, so I'm fine with it for this store. However, it's unfortunate that you can't seem to make a legit potion shop in the game. Maybe I'm missing something though, so if you've been able to create a potions retail store, let me know. This area at the top of the stairs is the sales section. Normally, these are at the very back of stores, but this is where it fit in best for me. That's the whole speed build portion. We weren't able to get a good look at all the final versions of each section, so let's take a look at those in live mode. It was a really fun puzzle to create a build that was both a shell challenge as well as customized to such a specific Let's Play family. The whole thing was such an odd combination of sim backstories and themes and packs, which is precisely what I love doing so it was fun to build this retail lot. I hope you enjoyed the build too and feel inspired to see what surprising pairings you can make work in your sims game too. If so, send a like my way and subscribe for more videos. Remember, be kind to yourself today, and I'll see you next time.